Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're getting back into Venom Beyond. And at this point where we've come to part three, there's quite a shift from the unknown into more of a, well, okay, I see where this is kind of going. And it's definitely a good thing because sometimes you get a story with too many twists and it'll make you feel all twisted out. But that's not the case here with us finally learning who Virus is, but also the true identity of Codex. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so at this point with Eddie, the Maker, Dylan, and Virus all getting pulled into the Maker's portal, which was damaged throwing them into random places in time and space, but at this point we still mainly follow Eddie, Virus, and Dylan, with them all landing in this same twisted future version of New York. And like we had seen with Virus and Eddie being separated after going head to head, which then resulted in Virus being captured by your symbiote Avengers. And it was really like when they arrived that we found out that like everybody on this planet, they had some form of symbiote version of themselves. And from what we know, this mainly separates into two groups to where the majority, they're under the rule of this mysterious leader named Codex who has symbiotized and I'm trying not to say venomized. Like I'm really trying not to use that word because I'm enjoying this a lot more than venomized. But in the case of Codex, he's given the majority of the world symbiotes and it's almost implied that he needed to do so in order to take his place as the world's ruler. But also it's here where we see the Avengers of this reality, they bring in Virus to Codex who first strips Virus of his war machine like armor only to find Virus barely alive inside. But immediately after doing so, it's here where Codex then puts Virus through the process of bonding him with a symbiote, which is a process that we come to find out that Codex is having Doc Ock carry this out as like his lead scientist in order to see this through and i gotta say with seeing otto octavius do this like it gives me superior spider-man slash superior octopus vibes like with how he had printed a clone body which was peter parker and otto octavius both in one and not to say that that had specifically happened at some point in this reality but i'd imagine that a version of that story may have happened here at some point in the past of this reality which caused codex to choose doc ock to lead this procedure but in the case of virus they're having all kind of complications because the symbiote on one hand doesn't want to bond with them but codex wants octavius to do whatever's necessary to make it work so that virus can fall in line and continue to give him more information and even during the process codex has found out that virus's armor for the most part is old war machine armor that was bought off the black market and other pieces bought from the tinkerer and really it was all that virus could afford with it being scavenged technology from both tony stark and norman osborne that have been collected by a number of people over the years and prior to this point i kind of thought virus was gonna be like man i built this in a cave with a bunch of scraps because if he did say that i'd be like okay yep story checks out looks like it but the thing is like with virus giving codex this explanation codex doesn't believe him and mainly because tony and the tinkerer are dead or at least what goes for dead in this reality because we've seen the whole Captain America situation. But in the case of Virus who begs Codex to believe him because in this process he's in an extreme amount of pain. But with him begging Codex to believe him, he tells him like, look, it's all true. I'm not from this reality. I chase Eddie Brock here. And Codex loses it as soon as he hears the name Eddie Brock. Like he cuts him off right there and he's like, tell me everything. But from here, jumping back over to Eddie and Dylan, who had made their escape from the Avengers when they were occupied with Virus, and with doing so, they made their way into the sewers, and once again, doing this to stay off the street, cause Codex, he's running everything up top. But while they're down here to where they had run into the Resistance, and we find out here that the Resistance leader is Anne Wayne, who as we know in Eddie's reality is his ex-wife, to whom is deceased in his reality, and also is Dylan's mother. But even still, Dylan doesn't know all of this yet, because once again, the whole father-son communication thing. But also with Anne seeing and them here. Like on the flip side, we gotta take into consideration that here in her reality, that things obviously did not play out the same way. And when she sees Eddie here, she demands an explanation for how this is even possible. And of course, Eddie explains the whole story of him, Virus, and the Maker, and him and Dylan getting sucked through the portal, which you gotta admit, even in the alternate reality, like it's a pretty extravagant story. But when she tells him to prove it and like explain how he got a symbiote, he walks her through that origin and she believes him, mainly because it's the exact opposite of what happened to her. But in this case, Eddie took his own life instead of Anne. And it's a crazy flip that kind of makes me think of like your alternate version of Gwen Stacy where we had seen in that alternate reality like what if she lived and Peter died and it's very similar what we get here and just as another quick refresher because I think we talked about this like at some point during Absolute Carnage or perhaps even on the Venom playlist when we were talking about like the origin of Dylan but just as a quick refresher like in Eddie's reality it still holds true to what we had seen in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2 Issue 19. 
when at the time Eddie went to visit Anne and tried to win her back after everything she had been through with Eddie and the Venom symbiote, which psychologically took a toll on her. Like, and she knew in the beginning that he was protecting her, like in Sinner Takes All, but for her, even still it was a frightening experience that grew even more over time, and it definitely didn't help when she was later bonded with the Venom symbiote as well. And when we had seen her in Amazing Spider Man, Volume 2, Issue 19, she had pretty much locked herself away in her apartment, and she had gotten bad to the point to where Eddie stopping by, like, that freaked her out, but then Spider-Man swinging by in his black costume, that didn't help either. But then on top of that with Eddie, who at this point once again was trying to win her back, he then went after Spider-Man in order to protect her and make her feel safe. But then with doing this, it had quite the opposite effect. With her seeing Eddie turn into the monster that she had feared right before her eyes. And when Eddie got back, he then found out that the worst had happened. And when he had seen this, of course, he had immediately blamed Spider-Man, which is really how Eddie's mind had just worked at the time. And this is one of those things like most recently during Venom Island as far as the mindset of Eddie Brock around this time that we had seen Eddie reflecting on when he was telling the Avengers all about Null and letting them know how he's come such a long way because really Eddie's been through a lot but in this case within Anne's reality we come to find out that when Eddie went into that church he didn't come out with a symbiote in fact he didn't come out at all and Eddie from her reality had tragically taken his own life after losing his job leaving Anne and also the terrible history with his father and as a result and then went to the church looking for answers and in this reality that's when she became the original Venom and from here like Eddie asked like why her symbiote now like why it doesn't look like it did back when she had first became Venom and her explanation is very similar to what we had got in I want to say Venom first host when we got the introduction of Sleeper which later then got way more specific throughout the course of Venom volume 4 and that was really the explanation that all the symbiotes that had spawned from Venom that this was essentially the symbiote undergoing asexual reproduction to create more symbiotes in preparation for something coming that was big and this is how the fellow members of the resistance also have their symbiotes but when they step forward to reveal themselves and we come to find that it's this reality's version of Peter Parker along with Cletus Cassidy carnage Wade Wilson Deadpool of course and their Andy Benton who we know as Scream but all Eddie can focus on is Cletus Cassidy and the many years of his Cletus Cassidy making his life a living hell and on top of that we're like fresh out of absolute carnage so that doesn't help either but Anne lets him know that this Cletus Cassidy, he's made a full 180. He was the first one to join her cause, and after some training with Rex, he then became one of her best agents. And it's really interesting getting a heroic version of Cletus Cassidy. Like, I never thought, like, look at us, look at us. Like, I never thought we'd see today. But with help from Rex and their science officer, who we'll talk about more in a little bit, this Cletus Cassidy, he's turned his life around. But yet and still, this conversation is cut short when Peter's spider sense goes off, and we find out that other heroes and villains have tracked down Eddie and Dylan down here under the sewerways and they hold up fairly decent to this ambush mainly because Wolverine, Juggernaut, and the others they're not like full versions of their original selves. Like for instance Juggernaut he doesn't have the Crimson Gem of Sidorak so he's not really unstoppable but nonetheless with Wolverine, The Thing, Omega Red, Sabretooth like it still makes for a crazy combination in a closed corridor but no problem Deadpool has an answer for that so he gets the other guys out the way and he blows up all the attackers knowing that he'll be the only one to survive giving Eddie and Dylan and the others an opportunity to get away. But after this, it's here we jump back over to Codex, who's finished his symbiosis process on Virus, and it's here we find out who Virus actually is, or who he's been this whole time. And as it turns out, it was Scorpion. And contrary to my prediction on this one, but in the case of Scorpion, who's one person on a long list of people who could say that Venom messed up their lives, but like in his case, it does make more sense in relation to everything that has gone on recently, and most notably with Absolute Carnage. But strangely enough, for whatever reason, like when I first seen the reveal that Virus was actually Scorpion, the first thing that came to mind was the annual issue of Venom, and I can't remember if that was 2018 or 2019, but it was one of those crazy things where a bunch of villains were at the bar, and they everybody had these crazy stories about Venom and within that annual issue we got a bunch of flashbacks of like Venom going up against Wolverine, one up against Juggernaut and it showed us a ton of callbacks to let us know that Venom could go toe to toe with the number of formidable heroes and villains on their best day. And with the way that it was done, like you had this stranger in the bar situation. And Scorpion was like, really like, I don't care what you say. I've seen this guy. I've known this guy. He's not that scary. But then when the stranger lets him know, like the scary thing about Venom, it isn't necessarily who he's went up against and who he's gone toe to toe with. But it's the fact that he could be anywhere and you won't even know it. And really it's a side of Venom that I like to see more often. Like, and I mean like the predator slash camouflage with the water type thing. 
But aside from that moment in the bar and Scorpion's history with Venom, I think more notably that this is referring to what happened more recently, back in Absolute Carnage issue 2, when Carnage ripped the codex out of Scorpion's spine, leaving him paralyzed and nearly forgotten about. But with looking back on this, you can kind of tie the connection more recently from Absolute Carnage, but also from the way that Scorpion has viewed Venom for a number of years. And really because of that, I wouldn't think it too far-fetched for Scorpion to grow into a hatred for Venom, much like Venom originally had for Spider-Man. But in this case with Venom being the hero and Scorpion being the new Venom, if that makes sense. But then from here, when we go back to Eddie and Dylan, who had made their way with the resistance back to their lead science officer, Reed Richards, who's much older than our Reed, or the maker for that matter. And I can't put my finger on it, but something about him reminds me of that chicken from Moana. But when Anne brings Eddie and Dylan here, it's here where Dylan introduces himself to this Reed Richards. And when he tells Reed his name, Dylan Brock, everybody just loses it. And when they hear this, Anne asks Eddie, like, tell me, like, is he your son? Like, is he really your son? And he tells her yes. And he's kind of like, well, why is everybody bugging out? And Anne tells him it's because Codex is Dylan, the Dylan of this reality, the uncontested ruler of this world. And essentially, it's like he's the embodiment of what Dylan could be. And I mean, of course, after puberty. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the Patreons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link down below to where you can head to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. So out of the theories, we got one out of two. But from here, I hope that we get a whole lot more backstory on Codex. But until then, let me know all your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. And we'll do it again in the next one. Alright, later.